Hey everybody, sorry about the little blurb uh, below. I don't know what that is. Probably the sun or something like that. It's reflection. But I want to talk about something that apparently a lot of people have been talking about since Rob's been really bugging them, I guess. If I can get some, <laughs> get some light in here again. <clears throat> there we go. Now, anyway, it's something that's been bugging a lot of people for the past few days now, almost going on a week. Um, basically, the title says it below. It says, Champion in WWE equals jobber? <laughs> apparently, apparently that's the thing. But the trend I've seen to noticed is, Unless you're on another show, unless you're performing on another show, you're not going to job. But if you're on Raw, you're going to job. That's the end of it. And you probably want to know why you would probably job. You probably want to know why that's the case. Well, it's real simple. You see, Monday Night Raw is, supposed to, is a three-hour show. It's supposed to be for everyone, an all-ages show. Let's face it. It's got every, uh, It's basically in the WWE's terms. It's got something for everybody. All right. Now, unless, of course, you're in a certain vicinity or you're in, a, you're in front of a certain crowd or something like that, you know, things might change. But then again, if you're not, things may not change. For example, uh, Monday, this upcoming Monday on Raw, they're going to be in London, England. So you would expect a lot of the UK wrestlers, or the majority of them, to get a nice home welcome, homecoming, as well as to possibly go over in the home country. You would expect that. But then again, maybe you wouldn't. But getting back on top getting back on topic here. Getting back on topic here. The the one thing that a lot of fans, the off the rope show has talked about this. I'm sure other YWC and IWC groups have talked about it. Um a guy that does the Wayne's World column for Lords of Pain.net has talked about this. But basically, it seems this past Monday night on Raw, in the eyes of many, the WWE, just, the WWE visually showed that they don't give a damn about their championships. And they don't give a damn about their championships. They don't give a damn about their champions. For example, the second match of the night, according to some people, was for the United States Championship. Yep. And it was Antonio Cesaro defending this title against Kofi Kingston. Now, Kofi, of course, won a non-title match over Antonio on SmackDown and, in a kayfabe kind of way, earned himself a title shot. Excuse me. Uh, but earned himself a title shot. And by basically, and what that means is basically, let's say Kofi could have been number five on the list of contenders. And by beating Antonio, rocketed it up to number one. So anyway, because of that, he gets a rematch with Antonio, this time for the United States Championship. And what happened? Finally, after who, about 200, almost, almost near 300 days, Antonio Cesaro loses the United States Championship to Kofi Kingston on Monday Night Raw. Now, of course, this is probably going to warrant a rematch at Extreme Rules, so we got another title match. That's good. But still, 
Kofi Kingston ends up beating Antonio for this. Now, a lot of people want to warrant, why the heck would Kofi, besides beating Antonio in a non-title match on SmackDown, what else has Kofi done recently that's warranted him a title shot? The better question is what has Antonio done to warrant him to be the champion, right? You see, that's the problem a lot of people have been having lately with the WWE. The fact that the WWE lately likes to job out their champions. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to job out our champions to show that they're beatable. Or is that true? Or is it maybe the fact they just don't give a damn about their titles? I mean, you would think, okay, Kofi beat, you would think in more logical terms, and I think anybody would agree with this, Kofi beating Antonio in a non-title match, yes, would warrant him a shot for this. Would warrant him a shot for, for this. But, but, in a sense, would warrant him a shot at maybe extreme rules, sort of have it a couple of weeks to build up, have the match happen at Extreme Rules, which is a bigger, more, is a bigger presentation, if you will, and thus allow Kofi to win it on a pay-per-view. Give people a reason to tune in or want to buy the pay-per-view. You're building up to a match to see if Kofi can beat Antonio twice, this time with the United States title on the line. But that didn't happen. Instead, you're going to end up getting a rematch between the two, possibly at Extreme Rules, for this very title, if not on the pre-show. Go figure. Now, it just wasn't the um, U.S. champion that, as some fans wanted, got jobbed out this year, uh, this week. It was also, believe it or not, your new world heavyweight champion, Dolph Ziggler. Get a load of this. Okay, so Dolph basically is forced into defending his title against Alberto. Match doesn't happen, so instead we get Swagger and Ziggler. Swagger ends up beating Ziggler after literally slingshotting him off the top rope. I mean, basically this is what happened. Swagger catches Ziggler, push it, Throw, basically throws him over, throws him over, and slingshots him off the top rope, and then rolls him up for the victory. Thus having him job out in his second match as champion. Yes, he won his first match as champion on Friday, which is no problem. Which again validates the fact that on other shows, if you're a champion, you're probably most likely going to win. But when you're on Raw, you're not going to. Weird. But anyway, he ends up beating Ziggler, and then, as the Off the Rope show pointed out, the primary focus doesn't go back on Ziggler, who's your world heavyweight champion. Instead, it ends up going on the two guys that are not the champions, but will be challenging Dolph for this belt at Extreme Rules. Now, a lot of people, they look at that and they say, well, the good sign is Dolph probably will walk out with the championship. That's probably true. But still, but still, you have your world champion in his second match ever job out to a guy that lost at Mania, that lost at Mania, and then you don't even have the primary focus mainly on the champion until after the former champion attacks uh, Swagger, basically paybacks Swagger with his own sneak attack. Get what I'm saying? So you don't even focus that much on your world's champion, who's your second, who's supposed to be your second most important champion in the WWE. You don't even focus on him. And instead, you focus mainly on the two guys challenging him, and then at the end, you focus on him. That doesn't make sense. And that's why a lot of people were not happy with the way he was treated. But the good sign, according to some people, like the OTRS Central crew, 
is he'll end up probably walking out, out of extreme rules with this time. Yeah. They'll probably end up walking out of extreme rules with this championship. I'm getting over a little cold here. Or allergies or something. And you think that's something. What about this? Now, now I know this is the now classic title. The classic version. The Attitude Era version. But... When you take a look at the Intercontinental Championship, and you take a look at who your Intercontinental Champion was, or is, I should say, you take a look at who your Intercontinental Champion is, you say to yourself, well, great, you know, Wade Barrett's the champion. That's good. He's got the belt. But guess what? One week after losing it, and then 24 hours retaining it, what happens? He ends up jobbing to our troop. Okay, that's probably understandable why people would be pissed off about that. You know, jobbing out to our troop. It's like, okay, where did this come from? You know, basically, like, okay, where did this come from? What did our truth do to get himself a non-title win and potentially a shot at this title? Again, nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. But the thing is, again, like I said, one week after winning this back, 24 hours after losing it, he ends up jobbing. But what's ironic is he ends up retaining last night on main event. So again, that still showcases to me that if you're on Raw, and you're not the primary focus on Raw, you're jobbing. That, that's the whole thing. If you're not the primary champion for the champions people in the WWE's mind want to see, and that's our uh, gardener outside, but if you're not the primary champion they want to see in the WWE's eyes, then your job. So basically, on Raw, you basically one week after one week after regaining this on Raw. Like I say, 24 hours after losing it, he ends up jobbing to our truth Which again, to some people, make no sense whatsoever, because it's like, okay, the previous week, our truth was in a, our truth was basically in a six-man match, teaming with Zack Ryder, Zack Ryder and Antonio, and Santonio, Santonio, or Santino, I should say. Zack Ryder and Santino, and winning, and now all of a sudden the following week he beats the Intercontinental Champion on a non-title victory. And again, it doesn't, and some people think, well, that doesn't make any sense. What did he do? You know, why are they doing this? And again, my guess is unless you're not the primary champion, so the champions in WWE's eyes that people want to see, you are going to chop. Especially if you're placed against those that are supposed to be fan favorites of the kids, if you know what I mean. But again, ironically, he wins last night on main event. So again, it shows that unless you're the primary champions or the champions they want to see on Raw, unless you're not the focus, you'll lose them. And then, of course, I know this is not the Divas belt, but let's just say, let's just say he represents them. And Here's what's crazy about this. I didn't get to see the beginning of the match, but apparently, but apparently, watching the replay, it seems that Caitlyn wasn't even allowed to have her entrance played, made or anything, and then, thus, she ends up losing to the Bellas. So what does that tell you? It tells you that even though she's the Divas champion and is supposed to be the primary favorite of young women, of young little girls and stuff like that, if she ain't the primary focus, you know, unless she's the primary focus, unless she's like the next Wendy Richter, she's going to job.
and I'll be right back.